from the author of Spinsterella, the strange and unusual romance in Spellbound, that darker shade of black gum, the legendary Mad Matilda. Pick up the conclusion of the Spinsterella trilogy in paperback and key readers this Halloween. When it comes down to nonprofits, many people have an idea of what they are, and they believe that most nonprofits are organizations that go out of their way to profit from helping out the community and improving the quality of life for everyone in the community. However, that's not while that's the case for some nonprofits out here, many nonprofits don't operate towards helping out the community. They're all about helping themselves. And they help themselves through a covert contract. Now, when it comes down to many of these nonprofits, they often say they're all about helping the community. But however, they actually are all about helping themselves at the expense of whatever cause they say they're fighting for for the community. So when it comes down to a nonprofit, they're all about getting their economic needs met behind the scenes while saying they're fighting for whatever cause they say they're fighting for. And when it comes down to your nonprofit, it actually is a business. While they'll say they're all fighting about for this cause, they say that they're so all about, that's not really the case at all. And when it comes down to your nonprofit, again, it is a business, and they're in the business of making money through getting grants, which are money that no one has to pay back, trusts, which they get donations from, and getting in-kind donations from individuals and getting donations through other sorts of grants which are measured by performance. And with all these grants, this is how your nonprofit makes its money. And when it comes down to your nonprofit, they're not founded by some people in the community through a grassroots movement in most cases. When it comes down to your nonprofits, especially those in the black community, they're often founded by some rich white liberal who is out to make money, again, at the expense of the community by saying they're fighting for some sort of noble cause. I can talk all about these nonprofits because I worked at a non two nonprofits back in 2000 when I was working as part of the AmeriCorps VISTA program, and later on, in 2002-2003 when I was doing some volunteer work at a family member's not a nonprofit a family member was working at um, here in the Bronx and I learned a lot about how the nonprofit business model operates and how nonprofits operate behind the scenes as it relates to the black community and again when it comes down to your nonprofit in the black community they'll often have all these black professionals with advanced degrees sitting outside talking about how they're the CEO, they're the vice president, they're the director of operations, they're the director of this program, they're the director of this program, they are the director of social services. And what most people need to understand is all those black people are just window dressing. Again, there is some rich white liberal behind the scenes, and he is the puppet master pulling the strings of all those executives that he has working there. All those educated black professionals, again, they are just there to be window dressing and they are there to sell the organization to the community. In most cases, when it comes down to these individuals, they are, some of them are from the community, but many come from outside of the community. And again, they are using this as a springboard to move themselves up towards a higher position in another corporate organization, which in private business, or to move further up in either politics or government. So they'll work at this nonprofit as a way to move themselves ahead at the expense of the black community. And they'll sit there and they'll work with this white liberal behind the scenes in an effort to help him make money at the expense of the black community by pushing whatever cause that this rich white liberal wants to push in the black community. And the main reason why they're pushing this cause is not to help the black community, but again, as part of their covert contract to help themselves. Because 
when it comes down to nonprofits, the, the whole thing is that it's all about the grant money. And what that's what they want to make off the black community. And as long as there are poor, miserable, downtrodden people out there, they can enrich themselves at their expense by promoting whatever cause they want and getting grant money out of other rich people looking for a tax write-off, corporations looking for a tax write-off, individuals looking for a tax write-off, and other donors who are looking for a way to find a tax write-off. These nonprofits make their money by getting, by pushing their cause, and then enriching themselves at the expense of whatever movement they push. Because in most cases, when it comes down to this grant money, it's usually not, there's not much accountability held to it. Yes, they have to account for all the money they spend at the end of a calendar year. However, they can spend that money however they wish on whatever they want if it is a part of what is called their general operating budget. And this is a phrase that everyone needs to understand when you send a donation out to a nonprofit. The, anything that is sent without any sort of um, um, stipulations attached to it, all that money goes into the general operating budget. And anything that goes inside of the general operating budget can be spent however the director wishes and however the CEO wishes on whatever programs they choose to spend it on. For example, if you have a job readiness program, you can spend that money however you want if you want to buy computers for your computer lab, you can spend money on that, or you can spend it on a salary for an employee, or you can spend it on things that are for your own expense, like if you want to buy your own personal iPad, you can charge that to the nonprofit, and you won't have to pay any taxes on it. It'll be deducted as a business expense. If you wanted to buy a suit to go to a event or a tuxedo to go to an event, you could buy that and then deduct it as a business expense. If you wanted to buy yourself a brand new luxury car, you could do that and then deduct it as a business expense. Anything that is in the general operating budget that the nonprofit directors and executives want to spend on, they can spend that money however they please because that's all part of the, of the general operating budget and it's about operating the nonprofit from day to day. And where it gets really tricky with nonprofits is where they get certain types of grants. And that's part of the fund development department's goal is to get these different funds. Because I worked in fund development when I was a part of AmeriCorps Vista. And they look for different grants to get and different trusts to work with and trying to network with different individuals to get different types of donations and when it comes down to monetary donations most fund development people at the nonprofit in addition to the CEO and the directors they're often working on trying to get certain types of grants and certain types of donations from corporations and they often look for the kind of grants that don't have many strings again anything that they can use for the general operating budget they, they're glad to go and try to apply for that because oftentimes that money is just given by a corporation and all they have to do is send them an annual report at the end of the year and they can continue getting that money on the regular. However, it gets really tricky when it comes down to certain type of grants like these federal grants and some of these private grants from certain foundations because they oftentimes have strings attached to the money and they have benchmarks that have to be met. And because these benchmarks have to be met, they have to show how they have made some sort of progress or met some sort of goal or achieved some sort of result in order to continue getting funding. And that's the big challenge in nonprofits. And this is the type of grant that most nonprofits hate having to apply for because when it comes down to this type of grant, they actually have to show that they have produced some sort of work. And in most nonprofits, the major challenge of working in a nonprofit is this. 
is showing how you can produce work in an industry where there is extreme turnover. When it comes down to nonprofits, the average employee does not last long at a nonprofit if they are not a director or a CEO or a vice president. Usually those three or four guys, they usually stay the same because they're working and are, the, are controlled by this white liberal at the top who is usually the chairman of the board or one of the senior board members, but the other employees who have to go out and produce the results, like the trainers, like the program assistants, like the counselors, these employees turn over almost yearly and sometimes monthly or even weekly. I've even seen a case manager who only lasted a day at the nonprofit I worked at when I was working at AmeriCorps Vista. She just quit. And another one who just left after about a couple weeks. And that's commonplace at many of these nonprofits. Most nonprofit employees only last about a year or two years. And it's hard for a nonprofit to meet its goals because of the high turnover. And usually, because of this high turnover, this is where your nonprofits usually wind up having real trouble, especially when it comes down to these grants with the benchmarks. Because if you have a grant and it's and it's related to benchmarks and you don't meet the benchmarks, what usually happens is you wind up losing that grant. Moreover, you wind up losing your reputation among in 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 these nonprofit circles and people don't want to fund you so that's a major issue when it comes down to these nonprofits and one of the things that usually derails a lot of these nonprofits is the whole thing that relates to the turnover because a lot of times when it comes down to nonprofits yes the executives and stuff they'll be dressed up in the nines and Brooks Brothers and Armani suits and they'll have all they'll, their offices will be decked out they'll have top of the line computers However, they don't pay their employees very well. And when it comes down to their employees, they, they often underpay them, and then that leads to a lot of anger and frustration, especially when they have to deal with clients, and the clients really are argumentative, uncooperative, and disrespectful. And that leads to turnover, and because you are having turnover, you really can't meet your benchmarks because a lot of people, they leave in a very angry fashion, a very frustrated fashion, and they leave not finishing anything or letting anybody know where they're at. They'll just leave, and that'll be the end of it, and the nonprofit will be stuck trying to figure out how to meet these benchmarks, and that's where it gets really tricky at these nonprofits, and they'll start doing slick stuff like fudging numbers and doing things to bend things to say that people are doing things and trying to be real technical about it like an example of job readiness what they'll do is they'll say that they sent somebody and they'll call that a placement even though the person didn't get the job they'll say oh we sent that person to a job so that's a placement or they'll say that oh this guy went into an interview so that's a placement when in actuality a placement is supposed to be excuse me a person working in a job and staying in a job for a certain period of time but they'll fudge the numbers and say that they did something and it actually isn't but technically it meets the numbers and they can put it in the annual report because when it comes down to the annual report a lot of people look at the nonprofit and look oh they're doing all these great things but if you understand what to look for you'll see that the nonprofit is playing games with the numbers and one of the indicators that will let you know that a nonprofit is having troubles is the back of the annual report or the part of the annual report related to staffing. And as if you see the names changing from year to year, because a lot of people, they really don't pay attention to that, that tells you that that nonprofit is in trouble because when you have high turnover, it's hard to meet benchmarks. Now, when you have people constantly staying in the same position, then that person is learning skills, that person is growing, and that person can help you meet benchmarks further. But in the nonprofit game, a lot of them struggle because when you have high turnover, what happens is you cannot really meet the benchmarks that are set for these benchmark grants. And again, if you can't meet that goal, what happens is that that grant maker pulls that grant and calls it a day 
as it relates to those grants because that it shows that this nonprofit is not able to meet its goals so they what they do is they go to a competitor to meet whatever goals they want as it relates to these benchmark grants and that's one of the key one of the hard parts of your nonprofit that is trying to find money and in order to meet goals and trying to maintain a reputation in order to stay profitable because when it comes down to a nonprofit you have your operating expenses and the only way you keep your operating expenses the money coming in is by meeting goals and showing that you are making a difference in the community unfortunately it's hard to do that in many of these communities because the people are often working against you not only in the office but in the community as well because when you have high turnover it's hard for you to meet your goals and that's where again your nonprofits start looking for other funds to go look for um, and when it comes down to looking for funds your nonprofit will try to do you know really slick stuff to try to get grants like say you're a job readiness program or you're an art program what they'll do is say they'll go and apply for an education grant from a corporation or a foundation and again this will technically meet the term for education because they say they're educating people but it's not really what they do and they'll they'll go for that as a 99 to 1 long shot and because some of these other people just want to make want to just donate this money to get a tax write off what they'll do is they'll give him the grant and then later on if they see they don't meet the results that they want they'll just pull the grant or it'll be a one year grant and they'll just give them like a thousand dollars two thousand dollars or maybe ten twenty thousand dollars and they'll see that they'll do that for that one term just to get get rid of the money for tax purposes but in actuality the, the, the program does not really meet what it does and when it comes down to proposal writing there's not really much writing done by your fund development department because when I was working in the fund development department um, when it comes down to proposal writing usually it's the CEO doing the proposal writing or one of the executives doing the proposal writing it's not really you know people like the um, fund development people doing the writing all they do is search out the grants but most of these grant proposals they're basically sort of like query letters or book synopsis and all it is is a cut and paste job where you try to tailor things to fit whatever the grant makers they believe the grant makers want it's not something written out like a hard proposal sometimes the CEO or the executive will do that if the white liberal asks them to do that but in most cases it's a cut and paste job and all of that is shipped with a 501c3 letter and if the criteria meets whatever narrative or goal the corporation wants to meet or the government wants to meet or whatever politician wants to meet that company that nonprofit will get its grant money and that grant money again a lot of times they really want to get the money related to general operating budget that's the big thing that most nonprofits really live for because again that money can be spent however the organization's director feels, however that white liberal feels, however those board members feel, and there's no real accountability for it in, in technical terms as long as the money is spent however they want to spend it. They can, they'll spend a good chunk of it on programs and salaries, but again, they will underpay all their trainers, all their program people, and they'll tell them, oh, you're fighting for a good cause, Meanwhile, these guys are making twice as much money and they're dressed to the nines. And they're really just dressed to the nines because they're doing the work of this white liberal helping him make money at the expense of the community. And then they'll trot out after the programs are over a couple of individuals who say they have some success stories and they've helped out the community when in actuality it was all about helping themselves and it's continuously all about helping themselves at the expense of the black community. As long as they have a group of poor, miserable, downtrodden individuals, they'll create some sort of goal to help them. And this goal can be anything from ending homelessness to helping people find work, but it's all about keeping them working and making money 
for them. As long as they're making money, everything is fine. And one of the stupidest things people could ever do for a nonprofit is volunteer for a nonprofit. I mean, you might think you're helping the community out, you're helping to make a difference, when in actuality, all you're doing is helping this white liberal and these executives and these directors get free labor at your own expense. Because at the end of the day, when you are dealing with a nonprofit, it's all about them making money, not you making money. And what they'll do is they'll tell you, you'll get some experience, you'll get a reference, and all of that is a lie. Because when it comes down to your nonprofit, at the end of the day, as I said before, there's high turnover, and when in terms of these organizations, it's a revolving door. And because it's a revolving door, you can work there, get your experience, and then when you go to a private enterprise, what is going to happen to you is, one, you're not going to have a reference, and two, in certain cases, people are not going to acknowledge the value of your work at that organization. Unless you are getting paid to work someplace with a nonprofit, you really need to not deal with them because at the end of the day, you're not going to have a record of anything. And in some cases, you may not have a record of anything at all working with them if you have quit with them or what has happened in some cases, the organization has just gone out of business because when it comes down to some of these nonprofits, they just go out of business altogether. And the reason why they go out of business altogether is because they've lost their funding, whether it be the white liberal who founded it or the individuals he put in charge of it running the organization into the ground. Because when it comes down to a lot of these so-called black professionals who work at nonprofits, a lot of them aren't very competent at what they do. And that's the sad, horrible truth about many of them. They have big educations and they have master's degrees and some of them even have PhDs. But again, they do not they, they don't understand that a non profit is a business and they'll go crazy spending the money in the general operating fund. They won't look at the benchmarks as related to the benchmark grants and they won't try to continue maintaining the standards established by the benchmark grants, or they'll go out and they'll search for proposals in a desperate bid to try to stay in business and that's what happens to them in many cases they wind up going out of business and at the end of the day you're winding up stuck with nothing because again nonprofits are all about getting money at the expense for the white liberal they're not about helping out the black community in many cases now there are some nonprofits out there that actually do care about the community and make efforts to do it but a large majority of four of them is really a business that is created by a covert contract from white liberals to make money at the expense of poor people and minorities. Uh, if you'd like to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box. And if you want to learn more about the SJS Direct Publishing imprint, you can click the link to Amazon.com in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.